Greetings from Podcastville. It's Monday, the 27th of April. Get your shit together, bitches. Kick this fucking mule, Lee. Oh, shit. It all starts fucking today, all right? No more fucking excuses. This is the year of the fucking soldier. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. That's right. You filthy cop suckers. It's another week of in the house with your mother-in-law downstairs nagging you. You built your empire and now live in it, you fuck. The guest this week is my brother, somebody I have to apologize to on the air, uh, Mr. Jimmy Two Shoes Schubert out of Philadelphia, one of my early mentors in the comedy game. Uh, he had a movie he was shooting over in uh, Korea on the 16th and 17th and 18th of March, and I nearly fucking went to his house and choked him <laughs> half the death. <laughs> Because he had me so worried. I love my friends. Listen. No, I did. I loved the, the input. I, actually, it was March second through the ninth, and I was doing something this like that. Yeah, second yeah. Second yeah. season of the show, I had already done the first season, but I, I guess like people said, he, but actually to tell you the truth, I, I was wearing a mask back then. I knew it was serious when I got to Korea. Like everybody was wearing masks. The sets are smaller over there. They're not as big as they are. Oh, well, before you went to Korea, when you signed the plane, did you write out a will? <laughs> did you tell your mother goodbye? Dude, I brothers? was sitting. I had gloves. I had goggles. I had a mask. I called you till you, you got on that plane. You Don't know, I it. was. Hey, dude, if I I waited too long, I couldn't get out of it. And, and believe me, I'm glad I did it because that money's gonna get me through this pandemic. But Jesus, man, I would. They were. I was. Nervous, but I was also like, I'm just gonna just social distance and wear my mask and gloves and goggles. I wasn't playing games. I don't think on March second, the stress had uh, developed as much people as me. <laughs> I saw it March second at the comedy store, and I was done. Back in February, I was in Atlantic City at the the Hard Rock Casino, and even then. I had lights all in my room spraying. I wasn't touching any. You buttons. knew everything already in February. No, I would just well, unless they stop. Fucking when billionaires stop with the NBA and the NHL and just stop with, they're going to lose billions of dollars. I went, there's something up here. Something's something's real. And then you were monitoring it, and I just said, there's something else that maybe they're not telling us. So I wasn't taking any chances. I had gloves. I'm a little bit of a prepper. I had I already had the N ninety I have a case of like the just a little box of the N ninety five mask. I had the rubber gloves, I had the goggles. I mean just because you never I'd rather I'd rather You're have that safe stuff. Than sorry, absolutely. Yeah, so and sure enough, when I was going, I had the gloves, I had the mask, I had two bagged it. I got two masks. I got a cloth mask over top of the N ninety five mask. But I wasn't taking any chances. I just wasn't. I mean I was like even when I, I was I thought about you every day. Every day I lit a candle, I, appreciate I prayed. It. I called Adam, told him not to allow you back in the comedy store, <laughs> that you were electrocuted, it's, it's, motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, I got to do it. I can't. I got to save my people. This fucking guy went into the heart of Korea. Then I call you a week later, and you're like, I'm having a great time. I'm in Boston with Lenny Clark. Oh, he's going to kill another one of my idols. <laughs> no, no. No, I'm, dude, I was... <laughs> I dude, I was, I dude, I was, I was uh, putting the stuff on. I was social distancing. What pissed me off was when I called you and you said you came back. That didn't even bother you. No test, no hello, <laughs> no welcome to America. There's a fucking epidemic coming here. Well, I'm also a citizen. I mean, the, the the lines for people coming in from other places, that was like hardcore. But with me, I, I saw me. I had the goggles. I had a mask. I had my hoodie up. I had two bag masks on and rubber gloves. So I go, this guy, he just, I had to take all the, you know, all that stuff off once I get in. And, and he saw my face. He goes, yeah. So, but they didn't. They didn't They didn't stop. They took my temperature before I left Korea twice. They, Did they? Yeah. They, the be, okay. So. They do it over there. Not oh, They were like t twice. They. It's part of the, the new. Um, Who thing? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. They, were take, they took your temperature twice. And on the way back, Joey, there was nobody. I had 15 seats in front of me, 15 seats. Nobody was in my section of a, a business class. There was nobody in there. I was like, this is awesome. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, they had the curtains drawn. There was another section, another section. But the section I was in, nobody was in there. So I wasn't worried on the way back. On the way over, there was really not a lot of people around me either. So I'm happy you're here. No, no, no I'm not sorry. good. I, I, 
I, I was at the park with my daughter. I had just gotten back from Vegas. And I just called you to check in. No. And you're like, I'm going to Korea. And I'm like, I thought it was like a bad dream. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, whoa, 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 well, whoa, whoa. But at, at this time, I didn't know architecture either. See, that was my fault. Yeah. I don't, I'm not good with geography. Once you say, I'm going to the Philippines, I'm thinking everything's to China. At that time. Yeah. At that time, I thought all the Asian countries, and I have nothing against them. I wasn't blaming anybody. Right. I was just like, Jimmy, you're not going. Yeah. And well, believe me, I, I tried after back. that call. You called your manager. You said. I told him. I said, I, "You got to get me out of this." He goes, "Bro," he goes, "We're committed. You're leaving like that." I was leaving that money. He goes, "You can't do this to these guys." And I go, I, "So I went, but uh, also I looked up to South Korea, and the infection in South Korea was in Degas, which is like oh, like it's like 500 miles from where I was going, Seoul." Is a city of 11 million people, and they only had 100 cases. And I was checking. They were doing drive-through testing. They were already on top of this. So I said, I'm going for a week. I can get in. I get out. I'm only on a set three days, and I'll just go hit and run this social distance. And I did. And thank God nothing happened. But you're right. I was a little nervous. I, but it also prepped me for everything else. I was wearing a mask. I, I went, Even in Boston, I had a mask on, and they were like kind of making fun of me. Then I got in, Lenny, Lenny Clark picked me up. You know, he's one of my heroes as well. I got a mask on. I don't want to kill, I don't want to kill Lenny. You know what I mean? I'll never, so I had a mask on. When I, you know, I was finally like social distancing and stuff when you were there. But it was like, I mean, that was it. I knew I didn't, once I got to the end of March, I knew I was good. <laughs> All right. And cut this. <laughs> <laughs> Spray it around. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, uh, how do you feel? I feel great, man. I've been walking. Did you do any tests or anything? Any COVID, any antibody tests? Are you interested? Yeah, I would do, do a test. See? I would do a test, but I know, I, I know I'm good. Dude, I take my vitamins in the morning. I've, I've been walking every day. I've been walking every day, five miles a day. The last two days, we did six miles with our boy Steve Simone. We got Lee Syed out there doing I'm a little very walking. Proud of Lee. Just trying Lee's to get, just trying to get, happen. dude, just getting that sunshine, man. It's, I just read this the other day. The sunshine, even twenty minutes of the sun, the body produces microbacterials that fight viruses and parasites and everything else. Yeah, but you're so, out there for an hour and a half walking six miles. That, that's even oh, better. Now that's you, even better. Oh, now you're even you killing more days. parasites. But, more but you get, but, thing. But you were talking about. You know what happens when you eat hummus? They turn into worms inside of you. So you know what I'm saying? Like you got to realize when you eat beef, what's in the beef? When you eat all this shit, you're reading what's in it. Yeah. There's toxins in it, and your body needs to get rid of them. Yeah. So the best way to for you, but yeah, your body pisses some of them out. Yeah, sometimes you take a shit that smells like ten horses died. <laughs> oh my God, I've been eating, I'm on the garlic pill. You know, oh, I yeah. do three or four of those a day. That's nature's penicillin. And that's nature's penicillin. Then I make my wife. Well, how many garlic cloves does the recipe call for? Because you know, white people they stick to the recipe. <laughs> well, it calls for three garlic cloves. Then put six. Yeah. Well, it won't taste the same. It'll taste better. It's garlic. Yeah. And I'll shit blood, and it cleans you the fuck out. I'm a big garlic dude. Always have been. When Pablo sent me the capsules, I was like, oh. I thought in the old days, like, my mom, when I was a kid, used to make me cloves of butter with Cuban bread and olive oil. When I, when I first came from, I still remember. With garlic, you mean? With garlic on the bread? No fucking cooked garlic. Like, raw garlic. Raw garlic. With olive oil and whatever, you know I what I do? Stunk like fucking a, uh, a vampire. You know what I do? I take the the cloves of garlic, chop them up. I put this. Uh, I have this stuff called manuka honey. It's like a superfood. It's like you know. It's like it costs like twenty, thirty bucks, but it's this raw super. It's great. And I put the garlic right in the honey, and I swallow it. It helps me get it down. But you're right. You take dumps, boy. They stink. But I'd rather, I'd rather, I'm telling you, that's nature's penicillin. I'd rather take it. Like you said, Simone goes, I think I put too much garlic in the sauce. I go, give it to me, bro. Give it to me. Yeah, yeah I'll eat me it. Too. I don't give a I shit. I like it. You know, you, we live in California, which, are, you know, most people who listen to this, yeah, live in California, you live in Arizona, you, well, some people in New York, or some people in England where you, it's fucking cloudy every day, whatever the fuck. You know, you, you I, 
like I love the sun. Yeah. The best sun I've ever been out in front of is Colorado's. When yeah. I was a kid and I'd go to Aspen, you walk 10 minutes, you came back with a, people would go, where did you come from, Jamaica? Yeah. You're 12,000 feet higher than most people, or 14,000 feet. Yeah. I went out and bought SPF and I would put it on and hitchhike and come home and let people be like, where the fuck? So I fell in love with the sun. I've always liked the sun. Yeah. I never knew the healing properties of it. You know how good the sun is right now? There's no pollution. Dude, Go down Laurel Canyon and see how low, how much you could far, how far you could look into the. Really? Today. Take a ride. Four o'clock. Just to change it up. What was the last time you went to Hollywood, Lee? Never. A month or two. Okay. <laughs> Today, just 430. When you think it's supposed to be trafficking. Get in your car and go over Laurel Canyon. You can Canyon. see all the way out there, all the way it up to the It is the most spectacular thing you have ever seen. No, no, no. You used to see it before. Yeah. Now you can actually see that little house that has a porch sitting in front of it and kids playing. You could see all the clearness in the air. So the air has been the best that it's ever been. They showed the air in New Delphi. Yeah. Whatever new, whatever. You could see the you could see the Himalayas, the which Himalayas, you could never see. It's tremendous now. So Dude. that no, no. Part of this disease is not staying home. It's getting out. It's getting out. Social distance, not but get out fun. in the sun. No, I avoid people. Yeah, I that's what I'm saying. Dude, we do this walk in the neighborhood. There's nobody back there. There's, there, nobody there, back dude, there. there's bluebirds. I've never seen bluebirds, butterflies. You know, finches. I mean, you walk through, you see all this stuff that you never get. I go, when's the last time you've seen this? There's birds everywhere. They're, you know, the flowers are blooming. I don't stay away from people. We do a social distance walking, but it's, dude, it's great to get out. I'm telling you, I feel great. And this is this will be day seven, seven days, five, at least five miles a day. What were you doing for the first couple of weeks? Were you just home? I know you're a single guy. I mean, how was it feeling for you at the house? Well, what you know what? Anxieties were you getting? Now, there was cu there's a couple days, you know, the, uh, like I, 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 like after like I like laid around for like three days, and it was getting me down. I missed doing stand up. I said, oh. "How long is this going to go on?" I was kind of, uh, I had a freak out, and then I said, "You know what? No." Get up every day. I started reading books. I got, I'm reading four books. I got one by the, one by the the toilet, one by my bed, one by my uh, the couch. So I got books going. I got. Uh, I'm watching a couple documentaries. I'm catching up on some stuff I want to catch up on. I redecorated my joint. I'm turning my back bedroom into like a little social media studio. I'm just. I'm. Just, I'm keeping myself busy. I'm walking. I'm eating healthy. I'm cooking. I'm learning how to cook some stuff that I wanted to cook that I couldn't cook. Uh, I tried that. I'm just look. I'm just trying to stay positive. I'm trying to stay focused. You're right. This thing can beat you up, but you got to make a decision. I mean, I'm. Coming. It's gonna beat you up. Physic, uh, 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 mentally. Uh, what's the word? It's gonna like the the beating you're taking already. You're going into a fight with a a financial stigma going into your head. Yeah, that you're about to lose everything. Yeah. So you can do two things. You can sit there and worry, kill yourself. You know, I'm not. Listen, things work out. Furlough, uh, you know, unemployment. Yeah. They all work out. Whatever. But then, I think there's more. Like I read an article in Time about how kids from this generation are affected. I have her involved all day. She's been going since 8.15 this morning. Yeah. You know, I don't let her. She's waiting for me right now to hit the mitts because she gets three stars. <laughs> so, I get her outside throwing punches. She throws a nine-pound ball, right. you know. So I put myself on a schedule. It's been a blessing to have her because just yeah. when you want to shoot yourself, she says something to you that makes you laugh. It's yeah. so stupid, you know? Yeah. I got to ask you about something else now because you mentioned it. I mean, more than me and more than any of these fucking pieces of shit that are walking around <laughs> calling themselves comedians with no class. Uh, you have been a veteran of two comedy wars here. You were a veteran of the Kennison days at the comedy store, which are uh, history. They're yeah. history. And then these last seven years, which has been a great run at the store. Absolutely. We all know as human beings that it's going to take a minute to get it back yeah. to where it was. All our businesses, every other club in the country, you know. Yeah. Uh, what do you see happening for yourself for comedy for the year and as a whole? Well, 
I'm glad you brought it up. I'm in May 15th. I got a brand new album dropping called Zero Tolerance. Okay. It's coming out on, you know, it'll be on Sirius XM, but it'll also be available on all the streaming platforms on May 15th. iTunes? Uh, iTunes, yeah. I think it's one of my best albums. So I got that coming out. And I'm also working. I mean, I'm, I'm just keeping, keeping right. What I think will happen is, this is what I think. I think if you got a comedy club that seats 300 people, that comedy club will now seat 150. They'll do some social distance seating initially so people aren't sitting right next to each other until they get back to the point where everybody feels comfortable. But I think so the money's going to drop. I think a lot of the clubs have struggled, like the the like the 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 like the the um, the, ser- the the um, servers have struggled. A lot of these people are having a tough time making a living. So I think it's going to come back a little bit gradually. But I do think eventually it will come all the way back. I think people want to hear what comedians have to say about this. This is a whole new. I mean, you know, like you say you survived the pandemic. You can say that when you get to that point, and and people are going to want to hear what you have to say about it. I think people need to laugh more than ever now. I mean, you know, I don't... And people doing these virtual fucking comedy shows, I'm going, fucking knock it off. Uh, can we stop <laughs> with the virtual... i seen you in front of a packed house on a Saturday night, go down like an Iraqi fighter pilot. What makes you think you're going to be any funnier from your fucking living room? Your wife just fucking walked out of the living room when you're taping your set. Stop it. It's Look, man... The cat's making a rope to hang himself. I swear to God, and you're up there with your fucking uh, cruise t- ship fucking act. You're, I was saying, I've seen those things, <laughs> and I love. Listen, much respect for giving it a shot. It yeah. just doesn't work for me. Look, you ever see a guy get fucked on the ass by mistake? It looks fun. <laughs> Looks like a lot of fun. Some guy struggling, his head's like a little retard. You know what I'm saying? Some big black dude is fucking him in the ass. Yeah, yeah. You're like, that looks like fun to do that to somebody. <laughs> that don't mean you want to do it. You know what I'm saying? If I get done doing it, you're not going to fucking yeah. corn out of your pants. On March 2nd, I sat here with Lee and played Johnny Genius. I know me and Lee were going to get the pantry on going and charge 10 bucks a month. And I was going to move that chair, put that couch, slide it down, and put Simone, uh, Eric Rocha, me, Lee, and, and Dean Delray in here every night. Yeah. And just do a night of new material every night. Tonight's topic, draw it out of a hat. Penises. Boom. Three minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. I thought this was going to work. And then I was like, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> We're going to kill each other because somebody's going to get the corona. Right. Because I knew just sitting there by myself wasn't really going to cut it. I just know. I just know. You need that energy. You need that. Now, I know that there's people that have certain platforms that they have people watching you and that laughter is delayed. People are really trying. Yeah. God bless them. You know what? For me, I'm taking a breather. I'm with you. I'm taking a breather. I mean, I've been approached to do a couple. I'm just not. I mean, like, I mean, realistically, it's been a fucking month. Like, you've been a... You've been by yourself. For my, I get it. Some people don't have the skill set. But I certainly don't want you sitting in your living room with a fucking ukulele doing fucking song parodies. Like, everybody turns into Weird Al Yankovic. I go, don't you have something else? To, like, it's like, it's not doing anything for me. You, these people are fucking turning, like, you know, fucking Karen's a fucking expert on infectious diseases. Like, shut the... Some dude shaved his fucking chest hair into a bat signal and dyed it blue. You're going to be quarantined for a fucking three weeks. Hey, you hear about Tommy Esposito? No, what happened? He sucked a dick. Is he gay? No, he was just bored during quarantine and <laughs> decided to see what he's missing. Yeah. Like, people are like, knock it the fuck off. It's only been a couple weeks. Well, I mean, is this what comics talk about? Because I always hear comics complain, oh, the road's boring. You're by yourself in a hotel room. It sounds like that's kind of cool. Like, you guys have been preparing for this. Like, for me, I'm not, I'm doing fine. I've been quarantined for years. I like being by myself. I get it, but there's also people that have mental issues that don't do well yeah. and stuff like this and, and need human contact or whatever. Yeah. I'll tell you, though, ever since the beauty salons closed with the nail salons, and selfies have dropped like the stock market. Ain't nobody <laughs> fucking posting selfies no more. And if I get the eyelashes are falling off, they got to get the uh, bacon. Able, you're not able to wax your back. It's fucking, you know, it's just... Uh, <laughs> It's a real <laughs> dose of fucking reality. I, it it's is. Been served. I, I think it's a hard set for humanity. I think it's a hard reset for humanity. I think a lot of people have taken things for granted. 
We've Thank gotten you. complacent. Thank you. We've uh, Thank the little you. things. Thank you. Turns out now are the big things: the handshakes, hugging your friends, telling jokes, having a drink, having some laughs together. I'm telling you, man, you never take that shit for granted ever again. And but we have, we have, we've been mean to each other. You know what you realize as this has proven to me: the planet Earth is a giant human ecosphere, and we're all kind of connected. What hurts the guy on the other side of the world? Hurts me as well. And that we should all fucking learn. To, what I do have faith in is that we got some of the smartest minds in the world trying to solve this problem. And we're all united in one cause. I think I think we need to be more like that. I think people need to be more like that. I think people need to be kinder. You see someone struggling. Stop. Help them up. Don't be a mean fucking asshole. Be kind. I think that you see, like, even nature, like, the, the air is as clear as it's been. Rivers are coming back. Fish are like repopulating, and maybe this was much of nature's way of going. Hey, hey, listen, we live on a planet where anything can kill you: spiders, snakes, Carol Baskin. A lot of shit can fucking kill you on the planet, you know. But this is, I think, it's just a real hard reset for humanity. And I think you should just, like you said on the way in, people doing some of that big work up top, doing big work. work. They haven't thought since Do high school. Nobody's really thought since high school. Yeah. You got into high school, college, uh, SATs, BCTs, and resumes. You move from Emerson. You're in an apartment. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're charging you for parking. That You know, you've never had a chance to really sit down with your own outside. Lee, and I got to tell you this. I tell you this seriously. You know how what this workout that I've been selling you is? It's a form of meditation. Yeah. To let you know it's okay. When you get back from walking with Steve, I want you to go upstairs, take off your pants immediately, take off your shirt, don't eat nothing, don't sit down on your couch, jump in the shower, you get out, and this is where the true meditation comes in. This is what's going to build your heart, is the stretching. And at the end of the stretching, sitting for the best amount of time that you can, even if you lay down in yoga, they call it uh, savasana. Savasana. Yeah. And just realize at the end of your workout, calm your heart down. And this is what's helped me the last couple of weeks to so just heart. First week or two that I was hitting the bag, guys, I was five minutes away from a stroke. Yeah. I was Jesus. scared to death because the fear was coming up my neck. That's stroke type shit. But I would punch through the fear. Yeah. It just kept throwing hooks and digging into the body like Rocky. Yeah. And it it seemed, you know, I was so scared that the first five minutes of anything I did, whether it was body weight squats, I wouldn't need five minutes just to relax. My heart and mind yeah. would spin out of control. So this has become like I'm back to meditating. Yeah, it's meditating is the sound, so guys. good, man. It's it, it just calms it all down. Close your eyes, turn breathe, on. focus on your nose and breathing, and let everything go away. Your mother, your father, the cat. You know what? You can't pay rent. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let fucking Dami Lamas. We just release. Just release. I do that every day after my workout outside in the heat of the sun, sweating. I got to wipe my eyebrows while I'm doing it. And I just sit there, put my fingers together as gay as it sounds. I give gratitude for what I have. I give gratitude for what I don't have. And I go, Jesus Christ, I just finished the workout. I'm going to live another day. Regardless of all these people, they're showing you the tubes in their noses and, you know, uh, it, it, it's just we got to be very we're fortunate right? yeah I, I i think i think you're right i think that daily gratitude i've been doing that you know i've been saying my rosary every night I've this been, is it I, I've we're been back saying to my basics rosary. again no more I mean, fucking around i man. mean you know i say my rosary before i go to bed at night i pray for the frontliners the emts the doctors the nurses the people that are really on the front lines of this thing my family my friends the people i love and care about and in the morning, I do that stretching, get up to stretch, and I do that meditation. I'm telling you, it's the only thing that keeps me sane. It does. I don't watch. I don't even turn on my TV. I don't, I don't watch the TV. news. No, no more. You know what I got? I turn on the news at 6. Yeah. I turn on the 6 o'clock news while I'm moving around and eating dinner, but no more sitting in front of the news. 
That was my buddy did. My buddy gave me this gift a while back. It was one of those old style iPods, and it literally has every top forty song in every category from like nineteen fifty five to two thousand thirteen. It's got the entire Beatles collection. It's got the theme song for the for the TV shows that you grew up watching. You know what I mean? It's got everything. One hundred fifty gigabytes, and I just pick an artist like yeah, there that was Pink Floyd. Bam, all day long with the Pink Floyd, just listening. Led Zeppelin, Billy Joe, you know, just listening to music, and I don't, I don't watch it. I, it calms me down. No, you can't watch. TV. You watch that news show. You, 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 you being underneath the end table, working on a callus in the roof of your mouth from a loaded revolver. You know what I mean? It's like I can't. You know, it's you can't. You know what I was doing? I was watching from because I'm, a, I love being scared. I was watching from the news from three to four. So I would watch world, uh, world, you know, eyewitness news, yeah, locally, and then the world news tonight with David Muir at four o'clock. I'd be shaken, and that's when I would force myself to go outside and hit the bag. Yeah, that's why my stress levels were so high. Then I said, well, "Let me try it without watching the news." I was Muhammad Ali that day. <laughs> I was bouncing, stinging. You know what I did it, bro? doing fucking Sugar Ray Leonard's by myself. And I go, that's it. No more news. About two years ago. No more news. About two years ago, I fucking had, had the cable company come get the box. Yeah. Get this out of my house. Why do you think they call it fucking programming? People sitting around just putting fear in your head. Just putting control in you with fear. You know, I want to say this, too, before we get on a, off on a tangent. I know a lot of people are big fans of comedy here. You get the church family. But a lot of comedians that you support, like you said, no one's working. But if you go... To Pandora and Spotify, and you listen to some of your favorite artists, it helps them get, you know, a little bit of money at the end of each month. Like you know, so a lot of guys are like, you know, just go listen to some of your favorite artists. It helps them out, like comedians and whatnot. So yeah, it's thanks. a good thing to, you know, it's like we're not working either. I don't know when I'm going to go back. I don't know when it's going to come back. So you know, it's a way to way to help out some of your favorite comedians. You go mm -hmm. listen to their stuff, whoever it is. Go listen to them on Spotify and Pandora. And you know, to get a couple, you know, get a couple pennies on every song or whatever the deal is, but it helps out. Are you willing to get on planes tomorrow? Are you ready to get on plane? I would go on a plane tomorrow. You know, I gotta, I gotta. It's, uh, it's funny. I had this corporate gig that got canceled. It was supposed to be like, uh, you know, March twenty eighth. So they moved it to May twentieth. Now they're talking about virtual, doing a virtual show. I said, well, listen, tell. I mean, I ain't making any money. I'll do it. You already paid me half, but I'll do it. But. You know, the price is what the price is, you know. I mean, I didn't have anything to do with this. It's just, as I'll do the virtual comedy show, I'll do some stuff. I, I said, if you're going to do that, I said, make sure you have people on the other thing so you can cut the meat telling a joke, and then you can cut to, like, the 20 people on the other side of Zoom laughing and stuff. So it makes it seem like it's a real comedy show. I like that. I said, so if you have the people call in, I mean, it's for Gilda's house. I want to raise that money help out. But have like the, the 20 people sitting there. So if I can do the joke, you cut to me, then you cut to them, then you cut to me telling another joke. That way it seems like a comedy show. If you're going to do it, do it that way, you know. And then maybe we can do a Q&A and they can ask me anything and we can do the, you know, the time or whatever. I mean, listen, I, I'd i love to. I mean, other than, I don't know what, other than that, I don't know what to do. And I don't know when it's going to come back to full swing. I'm just hoping that. Doesn't go on for too long. I don't want to become a solo artist on fucking Pornhub <laughs> under the name of Pinky. <laughs> you know, fucking then know me. I got, what the fuck are you gonna do? I mean, everything I'm trained to do. It's an acting. I mean, you had to cancel that thing with the Sopranos. Did you ever pick and pick that up? Or did you ever go back to do that or no? What are you gonna do? Yeah, I mean, it's it's like what are you gonna acting do? or stand up or anywhere. You know, even what fucking. What are you gonna do? I'm looking at things right now, going, how are they gonna do this? How are they going to do that? I got a call last week, and they said that they pushed the movie back. Yeah. Till March 12th. And uh, that once things slowed down, they would try to put the band back together to shoot that one scene. Right. I, my response was, we're going to have to see when that scene is, at what time, because I'm 57, and I fit into all those things, and. I'm not even traveling for comedy. Yeah. Like, I'm not traveling for comedy. I'm holding on to my brand date in June. Yeah. I've got a Vegas, July 31st, which I know I'm going to get an addendum for because they're not going to be able to seat 1,600 people in there. Right. I've got August 30th, August 1st at San Diego. 
I could walk there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. And I got Salt Lake City September 4th and 5th. If they hold on. Yeah. You know, you got to remember uh, what comedian, what people don't know at home, and everybody knows that every every aspect of life has a slow and a busy season. Ours is October through May is when we thrive. Yeah. If you want to go out in the summer, there's nothing wrong with it, but you're fighting against vacations, barbecues, after school party. You know, you, yeah, you're plus fighting. everything's been postponed or delayed. Right. So they're going to have to make up all these other dates for all these other shows they canceled. I doubt that like theater acts are going back to the clubs. That's not going to happen. I think it's going to have to happen. You think so? It's going to have to happen. Where are you going to start? I think about what what's Bill, Bill Blumen rights going to do. Yeah. He has 1,200 seats. Yeah. You're not going to put, you have to put 400, you're going to have to honor those dates. Yeah. To move on until they do open up. Yeah. Well, I also, I also think that, the, you know, the comedy clubs are, you know, they ain't been working either for three months. So they're going to come back out of this struggling a little bit and trying to figure out how to, you know, juggle all this stuff. It's going to be, a, it, it'll be interesting to see how they start to move back. But me, I, think, I love to go entertain. I know what people are going through. Yeah, me I too. love to go out during the week and crack jokes. I think it's going to go back to Monday through Sunday. Yeah. Comedy. Wow. We'll go back to seven nights a week. That's one thing. I think so. It makes sense. We're trying to get shows out. If I could get Joe Diaz to come in Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. And bang out seven and nine. For 140 people, I'll do it seven nights a week. Yeah. So schedules are going to change. That's going to be good. You go out of town now on a Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, that's cool. You're not going to get the profit margin you're going to get. The percentages is Friday, Thursday, and Saturday. No, but the thing is, it'll start to come back. It'll and start I, to come back. And, and, I, and I think the other thing is, too, as long as you, you watch the W Cup, I mean, people have been quarantined for will be almost for two months. So if you didn't have it, then you don't have it. I mean, you, you just got to, you know, I'm not, I mean, no one's going to go to an NFL game with all those people. But, I mean, small groups of people. Nothing still... is burning me up more than walking through the living room and then talking about an NFL draft the other day. And, like, sitting there going, the Rams got rid of what's his name. And I'm like, guys, you got to bring back baseball first. Yeah. You got to bring back the, the, the NBA finals. So I guess Friday the NBA players start practicing by themselves. Yeah. You know, what are you going to do? They're thinking, you know the idea, right? Yeah. Vegas, putting every team in a different hotel and nobody's allowed in and out. And they only play, you only go to one place to play. They're trying to put something so good. Something together, together, yeah. So nobody has to travel. Every hotel in Vegas is utilized. It's empty. They're Makes all sense, empty. Yeah. Empty. Nobody goes in and out except the players, and they get shuttled right to an arena. They get tested. They play each other. This is one option I heard. Yeah. This makes sense. You know, baseball, you're going to have to go back to a third of the thing. I don't yeah. want to sit next to anybody. I don't want nobody behind me. Yeah. I don't want a fat guy behind me yelling, go Dodgers. That's not going to happen with hot dog <laughs> chunks going all over my yeah. neck. Yeah, <laughs> you know they've 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 what they did. They're gonna have to redo. Look at planes. You yeah, see new seating on planes. I think there's also new cleaning guidelines on planes. Oh yeah, I, thank I think, God. I think they're thank gonna God. yeah because yeah, yeah. they're like germ tubes. Those yeah, they have to. I think they're gonna have to, they're gonna do the cleaning guidelines are gonna be different. Everything's gonna be different. Uh, I think eventually it will go back to like where it was. I th I think if there's no second wave of this thing. There is going to be a second wave. You think so? You know why I know? Why? Disney's not opening. Yeah, and then you got all the liability for that stuff, too. Disney is not opening. So 2021st. That, even if you're a retard, you're at home thinking to yourself, Disney's not opening. Disney's going to jack up that Pixar division, because that they could do. Yeah. Everybody could work on animation by themselves. Yeah. They're going to bring back the Looney Tunes. Nice. They're redoing all that stuff. They're gonna <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, no, they're going <laughs> to go, beef up that. You know, they're not, it's like some girl put, well, I hope they do construction. In, did you see that yesterday? No. Some girl put on there from the church, I hope they do construction and fix some of the Disney world. 
Are you retarded? Yeah. Did somebody hit you in the head with a stick or shit <laughs> feed gas in your eye? They're closing those places because they know 70% of people have to fly over here to go to Disneyland. I How got Angelinos go to Disneyland. Yeah. Right there I got news for you. I don't think that's, sh- I don't think, uh, they may ban that China and that international immigration. That, that's that stuff's done too. That, that ain't coming back. There's no more immigration or you ain't coming into the country. I think that's going to extend for a little while. My cousin sent me pictures of the streets of Cuba. Nobody. They just extended orders in some town in Mexico that if you see on your street, they're going to shoot you. Yeah. Without a fucking head mask. Yeah. If you're on the street without a mask in Mexico, there's some city right now, a couple of them, yeah. that they just stated, we're just going to shoot you. Dude, I was reading a story the other day about in China, and this is what this is the, like the, the scary thing. There are 21 million less cell phone users since this like virus broke out and stuff. So I mean, I think they like there's there's 21 million less cell phone users that, that were. For no reason, just like during the vibe, they just dropped off. Like this, there's, I mean, that's how they were starting to think about the numbers. And they said, these right. are lying about them. Like, they, they, yeah. they know all that shit. They're like, they, there's a, like 21 million less cell phone years. There's all this. We're, we're so, all talking because we take it seriously. Like, did you see that what happened yesterday in Orange County at the beach? Like 40,000 people were at Newport Beach. Like, that's why it's going to come back because a lot of people just aren't taking it seriously. They, they, listen, I'm not mad at those people. Really? There's most people that drive by and they see a line and they'll pull over and stand on that line to give them comfort or warmth. You know, the reason why you can't go to a park and walk around no whole park is because eventually three people will walk up on you. Doesn't mean they're bad people. It's our natural thing to be close to people. And be social. We're social creatures, you know. Social distancing is going to work if you make it work. If you lay your line and tell people, oh, stop right there. Yeah. Did you see the thing I posted the other day about the liquor store in the Bronx? <laughs> yeah. That's my mentality. What's it? My mentality <laughs> is basically, this is one of the funniest things I've ever read. I hope it's <laughs> I Oh, so it was the note hanging on the door? Yeah. If you cough, you're dead. You get the... Mm-hmm. Yeah, the did you see yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's my state of mind. I'm with my, you, man. My state of mind is basically, here it is, plain and fucking simple. <laughs> if you fucking, if you're going to be that fucking stupid, because I love, I love exactly what he said. He said the exact words I would write in front of my fucking business. I don't know where the fuck it is. Pull it up, let's see. No titty money. No no, no sock money. (laughs) No sock money. I can't find it now. I'll pull it up. It doesn't matter. But that's the exact way I feel. Yeah, don't be pulling shit out of your sock. Don't be pulling out of your breast. He he said a line in there that was so brilliant. And this is the one. What What he says, shut the fuck up. Oh, God, bro. Shut the fuck up. Don't. Shut the fuck up. The reason why I do every move I do early is because I want to do the percentages of people that have been in that place. Yeah. So I try to cut it real early. Like, I go to Walgreens at 8.15. I went to the supermarket. My supermarket opened at 6 a.m. I'm the first guy in Which line. Which one? Ralph's on the corner of... Uh, uh, um... You're going to die there. Don't go to Ralph's. Go to Billy Dollar's Market. <laughs> oh, yeah? Look at that. Shut the fuck up. Buy your shit and leave immediately. No titty or sock money. Stand back at least six feet, player. Store capacity to five motherfuckers at once. You cough, you die. Drink responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. That's it. Don't come in here with questions. Yeah. You know exactly. You know we got no lights off. Yeah. Why are you asking? That's There's a, fucking one forty one. What's that? What, what's that market you said? That market you go to? What's the what? Valley the Village. Village. Valley Village? It's just the small ones. It's like little bodegas. L- little yeah, bodegas, there's a little right. M&M market right by the corner, right there on right Moore there. Park. And that, that's the one I go to. Like. Somebody turned me out to a place for meat the other day. Real hot. I went in there, not a soul in there. My wife made a steak last night. Tasted like fucking God's 
personal fucking beef. Oh yeah, dude, that Eminem market. There's they... little places over there. Oh god, handy, dude. handy, a little Eminem mm-hmm. market. Yeah, he got Today the fucking, dude, he got cooking. the chicken marinating already. The sausage is fresh. It's been great. So, Shubis, what do you think? I mean, this is we've gone through two huge fucking explosions at the comedy store. The explosion of that you witnessed as a young man. Yeah. And the explosion that you're a part of now. How long till we get it back to that? Jeez, man. Uh, I, I think... Uh, first of all, they're only opening up one room. Yeah, well, slowly they'll Starters. get back, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take months. I think it's, it's going to take a lot of comics out of the business. Yeah, I think yeah. I think a lot of comics are gonna rearrange their lives and go. You know, this is where I was at. I've done this for eighteen years. My wife is, you know. Yeah. I mean, and I feel bad for people, but at the same time, I've always said that everybody's gonna get their own personal silver lining out of this. I know for a fact. Yeah, I but I, fact. I I know guys over the years, Joey, that like guys that they got married, they had kids, and they just said, "F it, I'm not." I'm not, I'm going to, my kids are more important. My family's more important. So, you know, I don't want to be fucking away from my kids. I guys started coaching a football team. So we got out of comedy all together. People do. You're right. I think people will hit, like, to go, you know what? Fucking life's too short. If I ain't doing something I love to do, if I ain't doing something that feeds my soul, then why do it? I think also, I think other people, I think other people that do nine to five jobs are going to go, you know what? Fuck yeah, this. That's what I'm saying. And that's they may go saying. into something artistic or, or, or playing. It's going to go both ways. I think if if you've taken some time to reflect over this period, you go, what am I doing? I'm going to work for fucking, you know, 30 years, and then I got 10 years before I die, and I'm going to go live my life. I, I mean, if anything, go do something that feeds your fucking soul. I don't tell you, look, listen, look, I'd rather fail doing something I love to do that succeed in something I fucking do that I hate it that I gotta go in every day hate it hate, hate it. my fucking life and I gotta tell you Joey if all this ended tomorrow between me and you I've had the most amazing life me too I've hung I've traveled me the world too. I've seen I've, I've made people laugh I've had the greatest fucking time Look, I, I had a great fucking run and if I gotta figure out something to do after this I will but I mean I have to tell you uh, I think it will come back I think it will eventually get back to where it was but you're right. It's going to change some things, and things are going to have to come different. I, do I think it's going to come raging back? Eventually, it will get back to where it is before this happened. But it's going to be months. I mean, people just want to feel safe, you know? I mean, you know, you get a metal detectors, or probably people taking their temperature before as they come into the club, you know what I mean? There's going to be some new safety protocols. How many years have you been doing comedy for, Jimmy? Jeez, like 33 years. So. I'm pretty safe to say you fucking love it. I told I love it. I fucking lo- I miss, you know. Dude, let me tell you something. There's there's guys who do this that that, that are that, that are famous and they do it because you know it's an exercise. Ex- I do it because I love to do it. I really you love. You do it for a dollar or ten thousand dollars. And I've done it for four people and I've done it for twenty seven hundred. I mean, you know, I love to do it. I, there's nothing that makes me feel the way I feel after I get done killing a crowd. I mean, I'm a true, real fucking stand-up comic. I mean, I've made every fucking sacrifice in my life for this. And, and, and I traveled, and I've been doing it for 33 years, and I just, it's still, look, I'm not I'm not a bitter prick. I mean, I know no, a lot of guys. Not at all. Not I'm, at all. Dude, I fucking You're, love it. I love when I see you at the store, you're limping, you're, ah, you're coming, and you look. I remember when I first got to the store, like, I'm trying to do that audio book. Yeah. So I'm trying to outline my life as, uh, Chapter one at the store and chapter two at the store. Like yeah. Had two different scenarios at the store. Yeah. We, when I went into the store the first time, I went into the store as a scrub. Uh, my eyes open, my mouth shut, just learning, watching. Uh, you know, I, I fell in <laughs> love with Mitzi. I got to do drugs. I met my wife. Yeah. And then I left one day. Yeah. And I came back with an audience. It yeah. It was a complete different Joe Diaz than the first Joe Diaz that went in there. Yeah. I went in there a scrub, you know, host the doorman. Yeah. I was the doorman in the back door on Sunday nights. I drove the I van. Love it. Me too. You know, this it's is the runner job. Yeah, yeah, the runner job. I remember the first time I met you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jimmy Schubert, call your guy. <laughs> he said, I'll never forget going to your house. You cooked for me. 
and there was a Monday night football <sighs> game on. The Broncos were playing. And I called the whole series. Dude, he's calling the game. He goes, Schubert. he goes, he's going to run this in. Elway runs in. And he goes, Schubert, I used to call this game. This is what I did. Dude, it was the greatest thing. We're drinking some red wine. We're eating some chili. We're watching, laying around on the floor like a couple of fucking 13 year olds watching Monday Night Football. Dude, it was great. It was great. Jimmy was one of my mentors. I listened to what Jimmy said. He hooked me up with his manager, who's still a dear friend today. He just came to my show in Vegas. He had tears in his eyes when he saw me. I yeah, think. dude, he loves you, man. We, we love each other. We were like a tight. We were we were Batman's villains. Yeah, that was the name of our crew. We were it was, yeah, it was like me, a Gar you, Gar 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 Billy Gardell, Billy Gardell, Johnny Sanchez, I think. Johnny you know? Sanchez. We were, he had a, gr a group of comedians, and 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 then he became like this manager. And I swear to God, bro, you're right. I I don't think. Like that guy, I'm, I I wish I could find a guy like that guy. Today. Yeah, he doesn't exist today. That's yeah. what I said to you. I've never had a person in my career like that since him. Yeah. Did you uh, talk to him in Vegas? Yeah. He's That's come cool. out to see me a couple times, yeah, too. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he even called me one day, and he's like, are you looking for a manager? This is about two years ago. And I'm like, I don't really know. He goes, Who's doing work for you up in CAA? Let me get the fucking phone. I'm like, no. Because his world is all gone. Yeah. Like the people he was doing business with, it's like that scene in The Sopranos when the, the inspector comes to inspect the house <laughs> and the uh, Carmela's father's like, get Pudgy Waters on the phone. And he goes, Pudgy retired eight years ago. Yeah. And he's like, that's what Gatlin would come back to. Yeah. It's a different world. His, his number one nemesis was Judy Brown. Oh God! Now yeah. Judy Brown would take him and throw him off a building. Yeah, he doesn't even compete in that level no more. So I considered him <laughs> because I loved him as a manager. Yeah, but I you're right. I think that's what, like, he would just talk to fucking people. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. He wouldn't give a shit, dude. I think that's like, hey, well, why can't we? I mean, dude, God bless him. That dude got me a pilot and freaking two development deals. So. You're right. I, I mean, I thought about it too, but you're right. His his world's different now. It's a different. It's a different. And he was a different fun. type of dude when he managed. When he called you, he called you to rip your heart out. Like I still remember being with him in his convertible. One day, he picked me up to meet him for lunch. We had a meeting with an agent. Yeah. Over by uh, Highland, that old disgusting building on Highland. As you made the turn up to the 101, now it's like fucking beautiful. There was a building there where bums hung out across the street. They saw yeah. porn. And I still remember he took me to see that lady. He told me right out. He goes, listen, I sent your tape everywhere. At that time, CAA wanted me when I was with him. He's like, this is the weirdest thing. I can keep getting calls from a guy that's CAA for you. But the holidays passed and he switched agents. So I was fucked. So I still remember one day Jeff picking me up meeting him like on Hollywood and he drove me to this lady's and they were called the Daniel Hoff Agency. Yeah. And the word on the street was the lady had quit like, you know, CAA or whoever at that time. Yeah. And took her roster to this agent and nobody knew about it and she was doing great things. Yeah. And I remember I know I know the agency. Yeah, I remember hearing I remember, that agency. I remember walking in with him going, I'm not signing with these people. This was an old crickety building. Yeah. Where nobody offered you water. They didn't have yeah, yeah. <laughs> They had like three different That's old areas. Hollywood, dude. That's, That's Hollywood Old Hollywood, Hollywood bro. Yeah. And you could hear her in there yelling, Fuck you. Get in the audition or don't call me back. Click. Who's next? And I remember walking in there with Jeff and going, Jeff, I don't want to sign with this lady. He goes, This is your only option. <laughs> nope. Dude, you tell that out. You know what Gitlin did, bro? This is a true story. I was doing a road gig. I'm flying in. I got a I got a freaking audition. It was for one hour photo that soccer that I was playing a soccer coach for with Rob Williams. Mm -hmm. It was in the movie. He picks me up at the airport. I throw my bags in his car. He drives me to the audition. I go in. I fucking, I did a great audition. I fucking, I wound up getting the fucking job. And then he fucking dropped me off at home. I mean, that. Wh where do you get a fucking manager like that in Hollywood? The guy picked me up at the fucking airport and drove me to the audition. 
I defy any fucking manager in the industry today. I mean, that's fucking a you manager. Have no idea. He picked me up. You want to fucking sit there and tell me I need more fucking Twitter followers? Go fuck yourself. I mean, this guy picked me up this at the airport. Guy, it was a different and, world. And was, and was, I learned so much from him that was all bullshit. Like the headshot theory. <laughs> he despite he, Yeah. He would just call you up. You know the auditions he got me with no headshot? Jesus. <laughs> he was a different dude. He man. was a different dude. And that's why he couldn't last because the the last conversation I had him I heard with him one time on the phone, it was not pleasant. But I still remember going to meet like you have to meet him once a month at his office yeah. and go over stuff with him. And I still remember I hated it because you had to park in Century City Mall. Yeah. And walk and cross, and then you had to climb fucking eighteen floors up. That you know that that girl that answered the phone still works in that office. Is that funny? That's his father's insurance office. So he yeah. shared his father's insurance office with him. Yeah, and, when when we did break up though, it's like the same thing he said to you about the. He goes, I go, Jeff, can you just get me. He goes, shoot me. I called everybody. I said, everybody. He goes, I called everybody, and nobody wants to be in the Jimmy Schubert business. <laughs> and I was like, you got fucking balls, bro. At least try to sugarcoat it a little bit. Yeah, he didn't play. He goes, I got everybody. I said, nobody wants to be in the Jimmy Schubert. He goes, fucking nobody. And I was like, you know what, Jeff? I go, maybe they don't want to be in the Jeff Gitlin business. And that has nothing to do with me. Maybe and Towards so, the end, he was like, yeah. Just, Cause he would, t you know, he, he, Lee, he, he would call you and go, "Hi, Lee, how you doing?" Uh, and you're like, "Who's this? This is Jeff Gatlin. You don't know who I am. I'm a manager, a comedy manager. I've been watching your show on. This was the most brilliant thing he ever did in front of me. Yeah, he's like, I've been watching your show on CBS, and I can tell the numbers are going down. Could you imagine getting that call from somebody <laughs> telling you that Just your randomly. show sucks? I was there. I was in the office, and he would go, "Your, your ratings are going down." I watched six episodes of your show. You got that fucking deadbeat. Like, he would just talk like that. You got that, <laughs> you got that deadbeat Jimmy Schubert in there. Have you, you know who Lee Syatt is? Lee Syatt's one of the funniest comics working tonight. As a matter of fact, I think you should write him into your show. Lee's doing a showcase tonight, 845 at the Improv. I suggest you go, because if not, your show's going to keep tanking. And you're going to lose. I mean, Lee, like that. Yeah, and, and it would work. It, sometimes it worked. Yeah, sometimes it was. Sometimes, sometimes it people, didn't. Sometimes it didn't. He but. got me auditions with Rona Kress. He got me auditions with people at that time that most people could work ten years and not get auditions with. Whoa! Like I, because I, I, he would light that fucking. That's why I don't listen to anything. Dude, that, why do you think I don't listen to anything? There was a time that guy had me doing three, four auditions a day. A day. A bat. Like like, dude, you had to like. I felt like Beretta. The trunk of my car had a, you know, I could put a wig, a suit coat, change, you look like Beretta. Everything. Everything. It didn't end. I mean, it you know. It never ended. And it was never like that again. I mean, there was never. never I mean, when I, he I mean, left, he took me to Acapulco to tell me. Yeah. He took me to Acapulco on La Cienega. Yeah. When they were down the block from the strip club and he yeah. bought me lunch and he goes, I just want to tell you, I'm quitting the management business. Yeah. I'm going to Vegas. There's a role for you in it if you want it. Yeah. I'll put you on the billboard, and I was like, I don't want, but it only paid $50 a show. Yeah. You have to do like 18 shows a week, and I was like, that's not happening. When will I do stand-up? He goes, well, you could do stand-up on Mondays and Tuesdays. And I was like, I don't want to do it. And we stayed friends, but his work ethic always stayed with me. And whenever people would call me and say, I need new headshots, fuck you. Sell the fucking pictures that you got, and when we sell a job, then we'll get new headshots. Yeah. And that would be the end of it. And it was because of Gatlin. All the lessons I learned, to, even today, I think Gatlin would be a little too heavy for today's comedy thing. Yeah. He would have burned, because if he would have had six people, he would have told Netflix to go fuck themselves. Yeah, and I think, he, I, I think he, even back then, I think he rubbed people the wrong way, like you said. You know, there's like... I thought he was a sweetheart. I always thought to he was the he sweetest was. man in the world. To us he was. But when he got down, he was one of those desert Jews. <laughs> when he rolled the sleeves, dog, you were going. You were going. And listen, I did great. He booked me in basketball. Remember, I, I was in your house the night before. <laughs> the night before I shot the scene, we drank a gallon of red wine and we did a lot of other things. 
<laughs> and I remember slipping in bed with my girlfriend, and all of a sudden she's like, oh, my God, we got to get up. I have to drive you to the Coliseum. She thought I had slept all night. I was up all night. Oh, no. I oh. get to the Coliseum, and they're like, Mr. Diaz, you're the first scene up. I'm like, I've been coming here for three fucking weeks. Nobody's talked to me. I do 10 eight balls and drink a gallon of red wine. Now I'm the first fucking scene up. I stunk like fucking dick. I look like dick. So when you see basketball and you see me in that scene, I was up the whole night before. Dust. Snorting up fucking dust and dude, battle. I felt so bad for you because you go, oh, he's gonna go work on a set. Because I kept telling you, one more hour, yeah, one more line, then I'll leave. No, but you, but the th funny thing is, is like usually you go to a set and you got like four or five hours before they even need you. You go lay down in your trailer, but you're the first scene up, bro. You're just the first scene, scene up. up. Oh. I basically went home to take a shower. Eat something. No, I didn't even eat nothing. I drank like a beer to make myself come down. And I got in my girlfriend's car and she drove me to the Coliseum. And I got there and I had to do that whole scene. Fucking not. I'm, I still remember them going, Step on the mark. Mr. Diaz, can you please go to the mark? And I'm like, I am at the mark. And they're like, No. And finally, thank God, some sweet assistant came over. She's like, No. And by the time I had to shoot, there was no more roller skates left because I had stole all the roller skates. <laughs> so in that scene, I'm supposed to have roller skates on. None of us have roller skates on because I couldn't roller skate. <laughs> when, yeah. they, when I got the job, they asked me if I could roller skate. Of I course. Like, I, 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 well, before I get a job, I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. <laughs> Are you? Can you do trapeze act? Yeah, we'll figure it out when we get there. Bro, <laughs> if not, we'll hire somebody else. I oh fucked up. It's the truth. It's the fucking truth. <laughs> you do. You tell them whatever you need. Can you do a, a swan dive? Yeah, I can do a swan dive. Yeah. Okay. The day of the shoot, because at the end, it's like when Sons of Anarchy called you in and said you have to ride a motorcycle. You know how many people went in there and said do you ride a motorcycle? Yeah, and then shoot came today, and they're like. I never rode a motorcycle, so they put you on a scooter, <laughs> and they pull you, and they put the camera high on you. Yeah. And you think, they think you're driving. You're not driving. You're, you're on a scooter. Yeah, it's on a You're shoot. on a puller. They're just pulling you. That's hysterical. And, they, and you're like, rawr, rawr, like making believe. That's a scooter that's pulling you. You don't need to learn how to ride a motorcycle. I'm sure that after the first season, Jax Teller and some of the regulars, picked up a FX paid for them to get lessons just to do whatever but when you take a job nine out of ten you lie to get that job i just read an article on yahoo chris moltisanti did you read that in the sopranos no never drove a car when he got the job at the pilot he got a job it was he was going to be tony's driver right he never said nothing to him that he couldn't drive I don't know. so when you're watching the soprano private pilot and he's, yeah, driving he's chasing him and he goes, the guy yeah. did you call that guy yesterday and fucking Tell him that you were supposed to pick him up. And he's like, no, my mother said I shouldn't even have come to work today because I was sick. And all that shit. He didn't know how to drive. He ended up banging up the car. And he goes, I'm done. I look, he, he looked over at James Gandolfini. James Gandolfini was laughing. And that was what happened. That's why I don't. I tell people all the time. Tell them whatever they need to hear. Dude, remember that fucking sign language guy that got next to Barack Obama during the Nelson Mandela thing? Yeah. And the guy's like 16 from Love Island, he's doing the fucking sign language thing. And people are watching this going, he's saying the same fucking thing over and over. Like he only had three fucking moves. The guy was like, like you know, he's just fucking <laughs> he laughed about the sign language. It happens all the and time. And got right next to the president. Like I'm going, that's fucking insane to me that you can fucking. What about all the sign language now? How many people got the COVID that are deaf? It seems like every time I watch the COVID, they're talking to deaf people. Just, the chick with the white hair has a chubby little black girl that's cute. She moves and wiggles. The, no, they, they they make faces. Like I was saying to Oh, me, the skinny guy for Garcetti. He's got to go. Yeah, he's I, got autism. Well, no, the, that fucking guy. Well, that's it. part of it. The he's animation. Got, he's half retarded. That guy. He's making noises. Oh, he's yeah. doing little things behind. Dude, the couch. and I said to my You're brother, I said, "Fucking bothering me, God." I said, "Did you see the fucking faces they're making?" He goes, "Yeah." You'd be making faces too if your fingers were full of shit. You got fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's fucking. They were telling people to fucking 
you know, I guess. I'd be having my own good time. I'd be <laughs> telling people, get the fuck out of the country, <laughs> abandon <laughs> ship, get buy back. cocaine at 1-800-COCAINE. Get, 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 get that blow right now. And he's like, are you going to get this guy, out? This guy, this guy's a fuck. This guy behind me is a big jerk off. piece would, of shit. I wouldn't trust that. Fauci motherfucker. smells like ass. How can he be a scientist? <laughs> 100 cocaine. Oh, dude. And I guarantee, like, when I see a black sign language person, I oh. guarantee black people are home going, what the fuck? Have you guys done shows with them on stage? Who? Sign language interpreters. Not a million people. No, 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 but they do. They yeah, do. They Some do. 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 Like colleges and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they do. I got to tell you something, bro. I'm actually, I was going to take an online course. It's not that hard. To become a college. sign language interpreter because you know, in the middle of a fucking pandemic, you're going to work. You know, they said they got fucking, they got people at the city Please level. draw up to see where you can sign up to sign language. I took two semesters of it in college. Did you really? Yeah. yeah it was Because I'm terrible at languages, but it's just English. So you're learning, you're just learning. I can still spell. I don't remember any of the words. Yeah, because those motherfuckers are killing it right now, bro. Yeah, that's your new job. <laughs> well, I, you could, you go, if you could fucking do that. I mean, you know, you got guys at the federal level that they make pretty good fucking dough, man. It's, and they're uh, always going to really need those weird how you've noticed. I have my favorite interpreters now. Isn't like, that funny? I, I've never seen Cuomo's interpreter. But uh, Sarketti's got the skinny guy that looks like Paulie Kelto's, the kid I grew yeah. up with. And then the chick from the whatever in L.A., the lady with the stringy hair. She looks like Carrie's mother. Yeah, yeah. She looks like fucking... Uh, but you see them all, and they all do the same. You see, Like you said, you got your favorite ones to do it. Yeah, I got my favorite ones. I don't even know what the fuck they're saying. But it's just interesting watching them and who the hell, you know. I mean, you know, sometimes it's even a little distracting because you're not watching the guy. You're watching the sign language person. No, I, I always do watch the sign and language you, and I listen to the other lady. You know, and I, I had one of the show because I was doing a benefit and they had one. And I was throwing in words like leather cheerio just to see what the fuck she would make up for. I would say, and then I stuck it in a balloon knot and the fucking lady doing the fucking sign language I'm coming up with the dirtiest fucking and I said sausage wall what the what the fuck you think Jimmy Shoes it's crazy that you've been doing this 33 years man you've seen it all would it, would would this bother you if this ended our careers like I said Joey man I, I look I, I'd have to figure something out but I will tell you that uh you still part of the magic house you yeah yeah i still that? do the magic dude i set up my whole dining room like i have this bar and i moved it away from the wall and i pulled my dining room table out and i set up a little kind of like theater so i could work on some shit it keeps me from fucking going crazy it's it gives crazy me how i first time i went to the house i thought we were doing the santa ria ritual i seen the two pigeons in the cage i'm like i didn't know jimmy was with the santa <laughs> ria. i thought we we're gonna cut some chicken heads off and do some fucking Book some roles and shit. Yeah. But then you told me you were a magician, and I was blown away. You have your own pigeons? Do you know? I used to. For years, I didn't let it go into my mind that Jimmy Schubert was a magician. I love I love. Because I would have stabbed him. Because I would have stabbed him. I'm uh, not big on magicians. No, I'm not. Yeah. So dude, I, I felt him. bad about it. It was like my dirty little secret. I didn't want to tell people. story, it was one of the greatest, greatest stories I ever heard. And it sounded a lot like Dice. That you started as a magician and Dice started as a Travolta person. Hey, yeah. You know, you look at that and how you started as a magician. You told me your dad would take you down there. You'd have the cape when you were 14. Yeah. And you'd do shows. I do shows for the children's hospital. 14. That's yeah. why I fell in love with fucking performing because you got these six kids. These sick kids were down there. And then all these African American nurses would go, You got to come to our church. And so I would do these fucking West Philadelphia fucking churches. They were like my dad's driving me down there with the like he said the Dover size tuxedo and he's got his nine millimeter on. We drop off at the back door, go into the church, and do shows. But you know Carson was a big fucking Johnny Carson. They have a thing over there like a whole tribute thing to Johnny Carson. But it's I like it, man. It's just something else to do. It's like somebody playing the drums or guitar for me. It's just something that keeps me sane if I get to work on something besides fucking. Is college. Doc up there? Doc who? The magician up at the Magic Castle, because I know you got into the Magic Castle. Yeah, right? yeah, the Magic Castle. Yeah, the Doc Eason is a guy up there that Doc, works. But there's, but you talk to him. Yeah, once in a while. Tell him you're friends with me. All right. He hates me. Why? He hates me. Why'd you? Find <laughs> he hates me. Why? Why? I mean, I got two hundred people that hate me. He's got to be in the top three. Whoa. Really? Yeah. Why? 
because he was a magician at the at the Tower Restaurant in Aspen, Colorado, in 1983. The Tower was on. Oh. The Tower was on. Does he talk about it? Or? No, but I know Doc Eason is a guy that fucking was a Denver fucking magician. He's like one of these guys. So, He's one of the greatest bar magicians ever. So. Doc Easton worked at the Tower as a magician during winter season. <sighs> and what his angle was, was he'd take a playing card, and then he'd go up to a tourist and go, put an amount of money there, I'm going to put a thumbtack under it, and there's a, re a rotating fan. If I could throw it up and stick it in the ceiling, i keep the 20. If it comes down, i give you your 20 back plus whatever, $20. <sighs> So every night, Doc would be out there doing card tricks. I'd be in the back dishwasher. I was a dishwasher. A friend of mine knew I lifted weights and hit the bag. So he goes, work with us on prime rib night. You can eat all the prime rib you want. I'll give you all the mistakes. Nice. That's how I started working. At, I, was, I was 18. Right. right. And nothing else going on. So right. I went up there on Tuesday nights. and We'd do a couple bumps of coke. And, and then when I'd have to bring uh, glasses out to the bar, I'd watch this Doc guy. And he'd be doing this to people. All these white people giving fifties and hundreds, trying to show off. Yeah. When Texans came up, they'd go up there and do it. Let's do it for two hundred, man. And yeah. he would put two hundred dollar bills, squash them into the thumbtack, put the ace of spades over it, or nine of hearts, or right. whatever number. And he'd do something, and it'd stick on the ceiling. Ah, oh, god damn it! So one night after work, you know, I'm stocking the bar, and I look over, and I go. I bet I could jump up there and take that hundred dollar bill off the fucking ceiling. <laughs> so I went to the back of the kitchen, made sure everybody was doing their thing, and I went out there and made like I was putting the bar stools up. And I just jumped up and poof, I put down a fifty. I said, fuck it, why leave stop there? So every night I would pull down like 150, 200 bucks. Nobody noticed. <laughs> Not even that fucking mutt. He didn't notice. <laughs> This went on for about three weeks. I was just pulling down 200 a night, 180. And I'd take a bag of shrimp home. I'd go in the closet in the freezer and just take a bag of shrimp home. I'd go home about 12.30. My roommate would get up and make garlic shrimp and pasta. Jimmy Burkle, God rest his soul. I never told him. I never even thought about the fucking money off the walls. Like, if you leave money on the walls, you're a jerk off. You deserve to get it stolen. <laughs> But he wanted to wait till the end of the season to take it down and have this big rush for the whatever. I must have docked him for a couple grand. <laughs> and <laughs> one day I told the story on a podcast, and about a week later, I got an email from like a representative or something. Fuck you. We knew, we didn't know who was robbing us. They thought it was a different dishwasher <laughs> after 30 years. And they just put together that I was the, the criminal up there in 1983. I had destroyed that whole system. I'm not proud of it, but it happened, I got to tell you, before somebody else tells you. Yeah. And uh, so somebody came to me about a year ago at the store and was like, man, I went up to the Comedy Castle and I mentioned your name. Oh, did I get an ear look? Look. Oh. So next time you see him, go up to him real casual, and then just drop. Joey Diaz sends his love and watch it. That motherfucker's gonna say. It. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. You know our boy Zach Waldman. He works. He does the Eddie Bravo's thing down there, but he's also he works yeah, up there. I, I did a show with him at, at Flappers. Yeah, yeah. He works. He does. Uh, he works up there all the time, regular basis. But that's so funny. You'd love to hear that story, but Dockies. <laughs> You know me, Doug. I tortured everybody at one time. Or no, another. I know, dude. It's, but hey, you know what? We're different people now. We've grown. We've yeah, grown. no. That was 1983. And listen, it wasn't, just, it wasn't just me. Then I turned everybody else on. They were, yeah. The Mexican little dishwashers were like, fuck him, too. Yeah. They were each clipping him. From. By the end of fucking <laughs> March, there was nothing left. I think I left. I started working there <laughs> November 15th, and I left February 1st. And I think the last week was the week I got them even heavier that they started noticing, hmm, something's going on with the money up here. <laughs> uh, in, in three months, you can believe it. Oh, I, I, probably, I, I probably got him for a couple grand. I can't days. wait to see him up there because I do see him up there once in a while. To go to a Friday he's got to be 70. No. Hey, man, listen, that guy. Right, he's got to be. If, I'm, if I was 18, he probably man. was 26. 
Yeah, he's 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 he's. he's it looks good for his age, but you're right. He's probably about seventy. He's probably like late like sixties, early seventies. It's crazy. I was yeah. friends with him and another great friend of yours, uh, Joe the Lion. Joe the Lion. Another great magician of the I world. I saw that guy where when I was sixteen years old. Oh, I thought recently. No, I mean, I've seen. He's down in St. Pete. He's down in Florida. But I saw Joe the Lion when I was a kid. And I am fucking telling you, it was one of the best fucking shows. He sword swallowed. He did fucking mind reading. I mean, he was like, that guy was like college entertainer of the year, like three or four years running. I mean, he was, Joe the Lion was a fucking monster, dude. I watched that guy. And then I got to work with him many years later at the Penny Arcade in Jersey with Ben Creed, me, and Joe the Lion was there. He booked it. I sat with Joe and I talked to him. I told him about that thing. What a great guy! What a, he was a great guy. No, he was a great. Where was Ben Creed? Ben lives in Arizona. I not too long ago, me and him just did uh, about a year and a half ago. We did the Atlanta Punchline together. Me and him did a two headliner show. Still down. works. Yeah, dude, hilarious. I mean, he's got. Yeah, yeah. he was always. One but of the he's got. He's got, uh, dude. One of the funniest fucking lines on his. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting heckled by this woman and he goes and he, uh, he's just going on you can hear he goes lady if they had a contest to find the world's biggest cunt you would come in second he goes why would I come in second he goes cause you're such a cunt like it was one of the lines but Ben Creed that ben just Creed, that's one, well, yeah. send them my love it's no did I yeah I, I mean he uh, he's one of those guys he, I mean, he was just like yeah, he, was he was a monster he was a monster 20 years ago so I can't uh, imagine what he's doing uh, now yeah yeah he's still doing it but like you know those guys like you know like you said man these guys guys love it they, you know it's like you know you slow down a little bit you get older it's still like a young man's game when you're traveling like you used to now but I mean you're still doing it still being able to make a living I think you know a lot of these cruise ship guys are, are, are screwed for a year that cruise ship industry ain't coming back anytime soon. And there were some guys that were just making their living exclusively on cruise ships. I mean, that industry's, you know, fucked. So I think those guys may rethink some stuff. You're right. It's going to change. It's going to change some stuff for sure. Now, the album comes out May 15th. Yeah, the album comes out May 15th. Where was this tape? This was taped, believe it or not, at Flappers. We did the, I did the album on Friday night, and I recorded my special, which is on my website. It's uh, Zero Tolerance. This is the audio from it's two different two different shows, but I listened to this album. I literally had like four editing notes. It's I, I I'm telling you, bro, I'm my own worst critic. I think this is my best comedy album I've ever done in my life. It's a monster. The writing I put into it. So look, it drops May fifteenth on all the streaming platforms, iTunes, everything. People get a chance to check it out. I think it's one of my best uh, best comedy albums. I'm really proud of it. Uh, I can't wait for it to come out. I can't wait for people to hear it. I am a uh, when it comes to my own fucking shit. I'm a motherfucker, and so I was. I was like, wow. I like 22 minutes, and I don't even stop till like 22 minutes in to take a breath, and then I take a breath, and then I just goes 57 minutes of nonstop. You know what the what the that what, old school fucking stand up. Netflix was great, but it took away, and now the country's starting to see it that. Unless you're a fucking idiot. Netflix is great. And the comics on Netflix are great. But I don't want you just to rely on them. There's a whole herd of comedians that Netflix won't do business with for whatever reasons they have that are just as funny or funnier than all those motherfuckers on Netflix, except for maybe fucking Bill Burr. But uh, I never want you to think that Netflix is the end-all, be-all, guys. There's guys out there that have been doing comedy for 30 years that'll make your fucking asshole blow up. <clears throat> All right, from Jimmy Schubert to Dave Attell to Vic DiBetetto. Oh, to, yeah. to not Just not because they're on your favorite little faggy fucking podcast. I'm talking about when you get sick and tired of watching all these podcast fags, including myself. <laughs> Go check these guys if you're, if you're a real comedy fan. Guys like Jimmy Schubert. Guys like Rich Voss. Guys like David Tell that nobody's talking about. David yeah. Tell is my favorite. David like, Tell. There's so many guys out there. Ben Creed. If Ben Creed was dangerous 20 years ago, could you imagine the damage Ben Creed must be doing today? Yeah. And you're over there looking at two fucking idiots on fucking Netflix because they got a nice shirt on. 
Yeah. It's Vic, time you, you mentioned fucking, Vic DiBattello. He's another Vic, guy. Vic DiBattello. Yeah. It's time to you it. You, if you haven't learned anything from the podcast, is they had you brainwashed with Comedy Central for 20 years. And they thought they were all the comics they were. And all of a sudden, the podcast fucking opens up. And you guys get to introduce to real comics. You're like, what the fuck is Comedy Central been showing us? They've been showing us fluff for fucking 20 years. Then comedy, then, then fucking the podcast came along and you got introduced to them. Then Netflix came along and you got introduced to those cats. Don't ever fucking just think that those are the guys that are, that are out there doing it. You get on YouTube, you're bored. You type up Vic DiBattello. You type up Jimmy Schubert. You type up fucking Ben Creed. This the, Bobby Slayton. What do you think? Bobby Slayton got less funnier? Yeah. No, he got older and angrier. Now he's saying racial slurs outward. He don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, now is when you go catch these guys. Remember when Rudy was here? And told me that I had to go cats to legends before they died. Now I can't. I did go see Guns N' Roses. And I did go see Pat Benatar. And I was exposed to a whole different world to help me to be a better comic. Yeah. So don't just sit there in your house watching fucking Netflix. Thinking this is the end all be all. Those comics are great. I love them. Half of them are dear friends to me. But if you're a real comedy connoisseur. Jimmy Schubert. Rich Voss. You know, these are the guys that have been doing it that maybe because they don't have a fancy podcast or maybe because they're not good at social networking, you haven't paid attention to them. Change your shit around, you dumb motherfuckers. Look what you learned from the podcast. Comedy Central was selling you shit. They've been selling you shit for 20 fucking years. Then we came along. Go ahead. Look at Comedy Central now. They had a pre-draft the fucking David Spade show. Like they got rid of the David Spade show. How the show in the world? They got to look for another house. Well, they do moves that only like yeah, they might as well join with New England. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That the New England's management might as well join up with Comedy Why Central. Why the fuck they get rid of David? And David. get rid of fucking Tom Brady. I would have put a gun to his fucking head and said, "I will shoot your cunt in the pussy." You are staying right here in New England till That's the right. end. I don't care whether I, you like it or not. You're not going nowhere. Yeah. The only way you leave here is with Corona, a bullet in your head, or Lawrence Taylor make a comeback and breaks your leg. You're not going nowhere. Yeah. And Gronkowski, don't you start. Because <laughs> I'll fucking hit you with a crane, you big fuck. You'll be squeezing oranges in a fucking net, in a fucking Mexican dive bar in Tijuana, you fuck. Both of you. You don't let your people go like that in yeah. the time of whatever. I'm ashamed. <laughs> Everybody in this country is excited for football, except the New England people. Yeah, They're sitting up there getting with Corona. They don't want the Corona. They get, yeah, half of them are in the streets. Give it to me. Because I can't live without Tom Brady and yeah. Gronk. What the fuck? Is that little short guy that likes... Right now, oh, if, yeah, right yeah, now if you're a Boston guy and you want to kill that guy, I got the angle. Hire yourself a hot little Chinese girl with gloves on to just knock <laughs> on his door because he <laughs> loves those little Chinese hand jobs. What's the name? Robert Kraft. Robert yeah, Kraft. Yeah. Robert Kraft will do anything for a little chinky winky hand job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you say, it. give me the Robert Kraft. Give me the Robert Kraft. Extra dry with no Whoa. eye contact. That motherfucker. I feel so bad. My heart goes off so bad to Boston right now. <laughs> yeah. My heart. I grew up a Boston. Everything. I love everything. I respect Celtics. I can't wait. A fucking Michael Jordan. That thing has been tremendous. But, <laughs> I, you know, this whole thing, you left the city. That doesn't give a fuck about football no more. Wow. Yeah, that's You that, took that's... away their heart and their kidney. They're walking on <laughs> half a fucking New England Patriots on a coma machine right now, What's wishing that? they could die. Filthy uh, now. Again, I don't know what happened what with Belichick. It? Edelman, Edelman, that tight end. Edelman. He, he went down there, Gronk went down there, and, and Edelman left too. No, Edelman's still here. Oh, he is? Okay. Give him give him time. No, I thought I thought I heard a rumor. I thought I heard a rumor. Yeah, give surprised. him time. He's a Jew. Gonna... They'll give him an envelope that'll make his head spin. Dude, dude, you're they'll, so funny. Send him, they'll send him a beanie stuffed with hundred dollar bills. That's that's like an old Israeli's message. We that's like something. When, that's oh. like when you put the fish in the thing, and he sleeps with the fishes. That's what Kraft is going to get next. A yarmulke <laughs> with a $100 bill means give us Edelman. Dude, it's so funny. You were talking about going to see the... I remember, like, I, I was at Brad Garrett's club. I had dinner before the thing. Yeah. But Brad, I told him, I said, I don't... I said, I saw him open for Sinatra at the fucking Sands back when I was working with Kinnison at the fucking Dunes. And we had an off night. And he goes, hey, man, I got some fucking tickets to go see Sinatra. You want to go? And he's like, you know, his girls and his security guys got one extra. Nobody want to go? Yeah, I'm going to fucking see Sinatra. 
We got to sit in a fucking booth, watch Sinatra do a fucking live. And Brad Garrett fucking opened for him. I go, listen, I don't want to date you or me. But I said, I watched you fucking open for him. And, like, you know, he goes, oh, yeah. Dude, that's what I love when you do Brad, Brad Garrett's club. He's got all the history, like the, the his contracts, pictures with Sinatra, all the stuff. I mean, that guy's had an amazing fucking career. Amazing. But... But what a what a what a, what a, a nice guy! What a I great worked, great great human him. being! I love doing it. I worked with him on uh, the Showtime thing. I spent a, f- a couple days with him. I didn't know what to expect. I love to get him on the show. He's got a he's a great guy, Brad Garrett. Oh yeah, Jimmy Two Shoes, the fifteenth of May. Fifteenth of May. So that's the fucking we're gonna call it the the fucking COVID CD of the month. Hey man, gotta keep that's fucking what's working. Bail keep, people out of the fucking. Keep dropping month. knowledge, baby. Where do they find it? You can go, well, uh, there'll be a big announcement at jimmyshubert.com, but it'll be on iTunes. It'll be everywhere. They stream. Uh, it's called Zero Tolerance, May 15th. Mark your calendars. Uh, it's a solid fucking hour of fucking straight stand-up, set up punchlines and callbacks. So, yeah, check it out, and uh, uh, you'll be happy you did. Brother, I'm happy you came in this Monday morning. Hey, man, you thanks for having me, Uncle Joey, man. You know Thank I love you, you brother. Now. I did something last week that was very disrespectful on the podcast. And I apologize to my professional people, but we're going to make up for it right now. I had a guest on, but I, it, it's corona season, so I didn't want to insult anybody and rip out a bong. But in honor, me, Lee, and Jimmy <coughs> Schubert are going to do a quick Z100 pack. This is 100 milligrams Ooh. with vitamins in it, melatonin, to help you take it a nice nap and out of respect and I'll never do it again to you guys. I promise from the bottom of my heart. I think we had these on that day, didn't we? No, we didn't do shit. I didn't do an edible all week. I didn't do an edible till last night. I did I'm one sure. little capsule and I was fine. No, we didn't do I shit. I think you gave it to me then. I remember having it. No, you didn't have nothing. So I didn't want you to think that we're weak. We have no <laughs> dates, okay? I have no dates. I have June 4th through the 6th in Bray. I don't know if it's going to happen. If you want to come, you come. If you don't want to come, I'm with you. I don't want you to be scared or be worried. But this all goes to you motherfuckers on the uh, for 420. Out of respect to you guys for being the best church family in the world. Salute. Salute. Fuck it. Salute. You can't walk on one leg, bitches. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Have a great week. And we'll be back Wednesday to rock your fucking world. Kick this motherfucking mule leaf.